You know, sometimes when you see a movie and it doesn't quite know what it wants to be, and you wonder, did they write a certain movie or wrote two movies? We're only told they could get one done, or maybe they had this idea and it was going, it didn't really go anywhere, and they like had this idea and just thought, I'll just cram them together. That's pretty much how I felt about Finest Kind. It is, it is, it sets up really, really well. I like what uh, Brian um, Helgeland has done in many of his other movies. L.A. Confidential, I think, is one of the most, probably the one of the most underrated movies ever. Most people don't even think about L.A. Confidential, and it's such a great, great screenplay. Um, so anyway, the long story short, it starts off, and I feel like I'm, I'm going to watch like a new sequel to like goodwill hunting it's the boston boston massachusetts it's the boston guys it's the the younger brother coming home from being in college and seeing his uh, brother tom the fisherman and it's like ah i'm gonna be home for the summer and they're gonna be bonding and it's gonna be cool and he's got the little girlfriend love interest in uh, jenna ortega maybe there'll be some coming of age stuff and you know the mortality issues maybe with the dad or you know stepdad and all this other stuff right but the movie goes that way and then just makes radical turns and then does things where it completely destroys all of the moral compass, <laughs> all of the things that make any sense on why we would want to root for a certain character. I don't understand why Hollywood and writers do this sometimes. And uh, it's because it's not conflict, it's self-induced misery and horrible judgment and things like that. So that's pretty much what happens in this film. So let's run through a couple things. Ben Foster plays the half-brother Tom. And uh, his uh, younger brother, younger half-brother, is coming back from BU. He doesn't even know that the, the, the brother got um, into law. Um, by the way, I don't know much about uh, Toby Wallace. Um, is Toby Wallace supposed to be some good-looking hunk kind of guy? Because there's at least a reference or two to that. And then, of course, he gets and lands Jenna Ortega like without any effort whatsoever. And she's obviously like a super cute and pretty girl, but they play up like he's this like dude that all the ladies would want. And I'm like, am I missing something? Like what, what has happened? This isn't like a Tom Cruise or a young Brad Pitt. Toby Wallace is just like, looks like a regular dude. And he's wearing like frumpy clothes and stuff. It's not like he's like, he has his shirt off beach scene or anything like that. It's just, it was a very strange sort of like, element in the background um so this first segment of the movie is is kind of what i alluded to it's all of this sort of like what life is like and then coming together and going out on the boat angst and and stuff like that being on a boat the boat hit something and, and there was a rescue and on the first time out and this is their dad um tommy lee jones which gotta be honest tommy lee jones looks the part especially in that first half of the movie he totally gets it and then later you find out he's battling terminal illness and all of that works the problem is is sometimes tommy lee jones doesn't seem right like it doesn't fit but it's okay it, it wasn't the worst part i think he he was kind of underutilized in some ways he doesn't really have like that oscar speech or anything like that so um anyway so the film kind of sets all this stuff up to the point where you know, the Toby Wallace character, gosh, what is his name? Charlie. Charlie gets Jenna Ortega, who basically is running drugs and trying to find a way out. And you actually are still rooting for everybody at this point in the movie. Um, they get on board, they get on the ship, and then they go out to sea. And the brother, trying to show off, basically, for dad, decides to break all of the laws, sneak across the border into Canada and start shipping. They, they have this incredible haul. Things are going great. And guess what? They get themselves stuck and they get themselves busted and the ship gets impounded. And now they're desperate and they need money. So it's this it's this it's this this contrived situation where he's not going to he's going to try to figure out ways to uh, first off, not really come clean and take full responsibility of his decision. Like he's he's put everyone else around him in this horrible situation. He's he's screwed his dad, the whole thing. And then it becomes Charlie who decides to use the newly found girl that he's known for like five minutes as the uh, go-between to set up a drug run deal to use the said boat to go and do this drug run. And of course, that ends, of course, in a bust as well. 
no, no, wait, no, no, it's worse than that. No, they get away with it at first. And then um, this is this is the terminal illness scene. We find out how bad that is. Anyway, so they basically end up in the situation where they get duped by a rival gang posing as police who steal the heroin and they end up in this. Now it's a gang war situation with the them being the good guys. Everything about this moral compass just went went complete haywire. Like, I don't know who I'm supposed to root for now. Charlie's banging some girl. He really didn't want to be with her. You, there's, there are scenes where he's like, I don't want to say he was going to ghost her, but you definitely get the feel like he wasn't all in, like he kind of pretended to be. And she's like, well, do you trust me? Do you want to be with a girlfriend? You want all this? I'm like, hold on, what are, you, what are you needy, girl? Like five minutes ago, it's like everything got, gets very inconsistent. And again, I go back to that expensive word, verisimilitude. It never feels like real life. It feels like we're, we're pulled out of this reality by people's behaviors not matching. Like it doesn't add up. Like it doesn't make sense. And, and I got to be honest, at this point, Ben Foster's character, you are the complete failure that everyone says you are. If you keep doing these type of things and you have to eventually pay the penance of what you're doing, but no, the twist comes and, and, you know, it goes, it goes around and tries to, now the positive elements about brothers coming together, reconciling old beefs, getting through, all of that is fine. But it's so bogged down, and the tone is, like I said, all over the map because it all sets up really well and it makes all this radical change. And I don't know why a bunch of fishermen think they're going to be able to hang with a bunch of gangbangers and get themselves caught up in a heroin deal gone sideways. I don't know why the Harvard Law kid, the, no, I'm sorry, he's Boston, BU, right? The kid that's headed to Boston U Law is now the genius at, and, and good and doing like it. it I don't know. It got away from him. It's it's definitely one that I was disappointed in at the end of the day. It's a midland grade for me, kind of a two, maybe a two and a half star kind of thing, depending on what you're into. But it's just it's like it's like a combination of two or three things kind of mellowed together. It doesn't have a great identity, and that's its biggest flaw. So that's my take on it. Finest kind. It's over on Paramount Plus. Uh, yeah, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Take care, everybody. I am Pops. Yeah. <laughs> Right? And I'm not playing no 